All right, here we go. Overdrive off and running. TSN 1050 on the TSN app. Your home smart speaker and up on TSN 4. Brian Hayes, the O-Dog, Jeff O'Neill, Jamie Noodles, McLennan. We've reached the end of the road here. Game 82 tonight. <laughs> and we know who the Leafs are playing. And I think I owe the audience an apology out of the gate. I got to own this oh, yeah. one. I was not even contemplating Leafs Bruins in the first round the last two weeks. It Why? Why? Because it was Leafs Panthers. It was Leafs Panthers every day. How often did we talk about it? They play Florida the last week. What are you going to do? Do you play Matthews? And sure enough, it's shipping off to Boston. And here we go. And I know it was a possibility, but it did seem to be leaning towards Florida. We spent a lot of time on that. We'll save that for the second round. Leafs are off to Boston. Well, let me ask you this, Hazy. When you knew it was letter of the law that the Leafs were playing the Bruins. What's the first original thought that came to your head? Talk to me. Well, it's the history, of course. I mean, and it's not a good one for the Leafs, right? Everyone's everyone's pulling this haven't beat the Bruins since 1959 stat. I don't remember <laughs> hearing that in 2013, in 2018, just something or 2019. New and never fresh heard for that. everyone, it's isn't fr- it? Never yeah, heard it, it is. Ever. It's a fresh line. Like, I've never <laughs> heard that. I don't remember teeing up this series because we were all working together in 2013. We were all working together in 2018 and 2019. I don't remember referencing the Leafs have not beaten the Bruins in the playoffs since 1959. Never. I remember that coming up when they played the Habs a lot. Right, that yeah. was it. Hadn't happened since the seventies. I remember. I thought two thousand thirteen was like the benchmark. That's all we talked about. It was like what happened then. The right, big comeback in Game Four. Noodles was in the building. I thought that was like all we. That's as far as we went back. I thought, but I guess not. No, we go back to nineteen fifty nine. Yeah. This is a new chapter, right? It's like one of those. It's a Beatles <laughs> song that comes out in twenty twenty four. Some recording that was on a a floor in a. In a, in a studio somewhere in London that they found, and they're like, we're going to release this, and everyone's going to have to chew on that, and that's what Leaf fans are dealing with today. Yeah, but I, I don't even think that... What is it, Matt? Like, 19... Like, where the hell did that come from? Dude, I've never heard incredible. of that before. They just, someone and, and, dug it up today. <laughs> okay, but... I don't even know if Austin Matthews' dad was born in 1959. You know what I it's mean? It's not like, relevant, who cares? obviously, today. And if you're a Leaf fan, the the oldest number that you really remember that is relevant is 1967, not 1959. I just right. found that interesting that everyone had that prepared last night. It was everywhere. Haven't beat the Bruins since 59. I'm like, we've done this. Th- this will be the fourth time we're teeing up a Leafs-Bruins series. And maybe Never I've just it. forgotten it. Maybe I, it was nope. five years ago the last time they played, nope. but you guys correct me if I'm wrong. I, I don't I've remember referencing that. Well, Noodles, I want to ask you this. You covered the Sens last night, and you did that broadcast, Sens-Bruins. How interested did they look in winning that matchup? That's what I want to know. <laughs> well, for two periods, they were out to line. Like, I don't even know. The shots <laughs> at one point. The one At one point, the shots, I think Ottawa was out shooting them like 19 to 8 halfway through the game like the Bruins are just kind of sauntering around going through the motions and I don't know and then they turned it on in the third I think the shots were 25 to 2 or something in the third like it was ridiculous Ottawa didn't get out of their own zone and the the goalie stole it like Anton Forsberg was ridiculous now I don't know if they wanted to win if they didn't want to win you always want to win a game like I don't know I mean, we'll talk to John Tortorella. Like, he pulled the goalie, all of that. That's good later. But I think the bigger thing is the Bruins didn't play well the night before against the Washington Capitals. They got shut out 2 nothing. Now, the Capitals needed that game. They got it. So I was thinking, okay, the Bruins are going to come in here. They want to finish. Like, they want to win the division. You're fighting for the top of the division. And they had a half-ass effort for about 38 minutes. And then they turned it up in the third, and I was like, okay, now they're serious. And they were hitting posts. They were missing wide-open nets, and Forsberg was making ridiculous saves. But they ended up falling short. And now you got now you got the Toronto Maple Leafs. There is no easy out here. Even talking to people in Boston, like they're – I was talking to some of the guys uh, in the media group before the game. I say, who do you want? They're like, you know, there's no easy out here. Like, you, you, pick your poison. And I think all the teams are saying that. Like, not just in Toronto, not in Boston. What do you think they're saying in Tampa and Florida today? Mm-hmm. Like, Dude, there's some bizarro first-round matchups, man. Like, you'd want to talk about heavyweight tilts right off the hop. And – we always complain it should be one versus eight. 
and I know it's a it's about the last series you want it to be the best, but there is some unbelievable matchups like Colorado Winnipeg with Winnipeg with home ice. What a series! Dude. Yeah, well, that's what snuck up down the stretch. Like to get yeah. back to what I was saying about us focused on on Leafs Panthers was in large part because the Bruins didn't feel like they were going to take their foot off the gas, but they did. Like yeah. they lost in regulation to Washington in Ottawa. Like auto, both Ottawa and Boston were on a back to back. Boston's at home and they lose that game. Like I just assumed the Bruins would do enough to keep Florida pushing behind them. And the same thing two weeks ago when it was Colorado and Winnipeg. Now the Jets have won seven in a row. They're flying. They Shutting steal, out people left and right. Yeah, like, they steal crazy. home ice and Colorado is stumbling in and it feels like things have kind of tipped. And um, we still don't know exactly who Vancouver's going to play, who Edmonton's going to play. It feels like Edmonton, Vegas, because Vegas has to beat Anaheim at home. But I would have said the same thing yesterday about Boston and Ottawa. Maybe Anaheim finds a way to steal it. That said, LA's got to get at least a point, I believe, against Chicago at home. And maybe they pull an Ottawa, Boston. Uh, and, and we still got to see what yeah. happens with Dallas in terms of Dallas and Vancouver and who plays Nashville. And they're still a little That's bit crazy. up in the air at this point. But Washington clinches last night. But I think in this city, obviously, what, what changed was the fact that they've got Boston now in the first round. And it was always a possibility. It is something that we have bobbed and weaved and talked about. But it did. we were focused on Leafs Florida. My, my understanding is a lot of media went down to Florida with T-shirts and golf shirts, and now they're going to go up to Boston for like Get four or five Get your parkas days. out, fellas. <laughs> yeah. Like, it was a little – well, it wasn't bad there, but it's not Florida. Like, it's right. not – you're not wearing sandals and, you know, and shorts. I mean, you. it was a nice day there, but it's not that weather. It's not Florida. I guarantee you some of the media members were going to go on a long trip, and they were going to hang out at the elbow room, and they got, you know, their, their bench set up and everything. It's like, oh, yeah. okay, hey, we're – Plans have changed. We're going north. And, Imagine how pissed you know, you'd be if you were like just ready to set up shop on the beach. You had uh, an imagine you had a tea down. time somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> like you were so dialed in. Yeah. You're in Florida, and you're like, man, we are going to absolutely floor it. We've got a great setup. You know, We're playing the Bears Club or something. Come down. Now you're off to Boston instead. And you know the, the Celtics will be playing, obviously, the, the Bruins. Um, but it's a very different complexion, and I do think Leaf fans, the, the reaction has been what I expected. I've spoken with many Leaf fans today. I'm sure both of you have done the same. And there's always like a defense mechanism that comes with being a Leaf fan because of their history. And it's even more hyper-exposed when it comes to their history against the Bruins, where psychologically you're playing mind tricks, Right. You know, if they lose to Florida, it's, wow, look at that Panthers team. And they're probably going to win a cup again this year. And they went to the cup final last year. And they had the Leafs number last year. Well, what's like, your comments you're hearing this year about the Bruins? Well, th I think the issue is that the there's two different things. One, Florida and the Leafs don't have a lot of history. Just last year in the second round, which was very deflating. But the Leafs had finally won a series, the series before against Tampa. So it was mm -hmm. easier to digest. The Bruins' losses have been crushing. All three, Game 7 in Boston, obviously the most crushing one would be in 2013. But in 2018, I think we forget about that. They were leading that game going into the third period, and they fell apart. And, like, they had that game. And in 2019, they were up three games to two at home on a Sunday afternoon. They scored first, Morgan Riley in the first period. They had that series, and it got away from them. And that's what's being dug up today. And there's another element to this that speaks to what makes sports, I think, so great and what makes fandom so fascinating is I don't think any Leaf fan, maybe a few, but very, very few Leaf fans have any friends who are Florida Panther fans. You just don't, they don't exist. I don't know anybody. I don't know one person. <laughs> the that only likes guy the is the guy that goes to the arena and wears the jersey of every visiting team. That's exactly. The only, that's but but the that only guy isn't around. a real fan. He's a troll. No kidding. And, and no one knows yeah, who that he's guy a troll. is. Well, he repurposes tickets, isn't he? He's yeah. like that type of guy. Like, yeah, you're I right, Hayes. So. I don't know one person. Like, you know, you. In the GTA, it's like it's Habs, Leafs, but it's a majority Leafs. I don't know any Florida Panther fans. Nobody like, knows core. any Panthers fans. So if the Leafs find a way to lose, <laughs> I know this, a few. <laughs> they're not okay. Fine, you do. Obviously, <laughs> Roberto Luongo and all for that. Them. Yeah, I'm exactly. talking about in Toronto. <laughs> yeah, every right. Leaf fan, every Leaf fan on earth has a close friend who is a diehard Bruin fan, 
And that's what changed last night. The texts came in. I got them. I'm sure you got them all. I'm sure a lot of people got them from Bruins friend, Bruins fan buddy who's checking in. It's like, oh, good to see you again. Maybe this will be your chance to finally overcome the demons. And I think that's what makes it even more... Um, I guess it's Com- not a troll compelling? job, but it's yeah, it's just more of like a visceral response. It's more, it's like you're alive here because now your, your Bruins buddies are are back in the fold, and that's what's coming over the next two weeks. And it's a re- it's a moment for the Leafs. They better start playing better. Like you mentioned that third period in Boston, that second period last night was one of the worst periods in NHL history. The Leafs oh, embarrassed themselves last night. That was awful. In the second period, and they've lost the three in a row. The shots, dude, on net, and it was like thirty-one to eight in 30, one period. It was worse than that. I think it was thirty-two to four or something. I got to look up the final. I, I couldn't believe it watching it. Like Joseph Wall was like that Jimmy Butler meme, where he's just like, "Get me <laughs> out of here." Are you guys even yeah. trying? Like, are you tanking to get the Bruins in the first round? It was awful, and they've lost three in a row for the first time since mid-January. Um, they got to figure it out. You know, and they're kind of cruising to the finish line. Tonight's game is yeah. all about Matthews getting 70, Kucherov getting 100 assists, and both teams go on their separate ways. But um, they Saturday night, go time, game one in Boston. Yeah, but here here's the thing. If you remove emotion from it, like you were going to have to, if you're going to go on a deep run, you're going to have to beat good teams. Mm-hmm. Boston's a good team. Florida's a big, a good team. So regardless of how you feel, It is all going to be about the Leafs and how they play. Yes, there's a crazy history that you just pointed out, Brian, that there's you can't escape history. It is what it is. Yeah, it is what it is. There is a crazy history. But you have an opportunity, just like you did against Tampa last year, where, you know, Tampa had gotten you there that that they were the big bad Tampa Bay Lightning and you Mm -hmm. found a way to get past them. Like I, I I had and I've had a few Leaf fans reach out and say, Well, you know, Boston's a lesser team than Florida, and you know I prefer that. I'm saying, you know what? What you got to do is worry about your team playing well, yep. and that's that's ultimately and 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 bringing it to the table. And and you know it's different this year, and that no, what you are. And I said this to you, oh, the other ne- other day. The Leafs are more like the other teams now. They were the outlier. The softer team didn't have the pushback, didn't have that. They were the outlier. Now they're like the other teams. They're the way you stack up. Mm-hmm. They've got toughness just like other teams. They've got so now let's have at it. Let's, no yeah, excuses. It's all, it's go all at the it. You're, you're absolutely yeah. right. The shots were 29 to four in the second period last night. Oh 29 my God. to four. You were well, off by I a was, couple of hazes. I was Shame off. Shame on couple. you. Shame on you. <laughs> Shame on me. Uh, but oh. it was still a lot. I knew it was a lot. I thought they hit 30, but it was 29 to four. So credit to the Leafs. My bad. It was only 29 yeah. to four. Somebody blocked um, that 30th opportunity. That's, that's what right. it was. And there were hit a, a leg and you went wide. Of or Bruins fans, like one of our senior executive producers, <laughs> he loves the Brew Crew, and mm-hmm. we had to make like a player agreement last night. He's like, you know, I guess we'll just chit chat after the series. Just business as usual until it's over. I love it. I love He's it. It's die great. Hard. I'm, I'm so excited for the playoffs. Like I think I can speak for all of us. It's We're finally here. And everything you just said, Noodles, is 100% accurate. It, the Bruins are going to show up to play. That's what the Bruins do. You know what you're going to get out of Bruin, out of the Bruins. They're going to play. they yeah. got really good goaltending. they got a yeah. great history against the Leafs. Look at it this year, right? They're, they're 4-0 against the Leafs. Uh, the numbers speak for themselves on FanDuel right now. The odds are Boston minus 120 to win the series. The Leafs are at, at basically a pick and plus 100. But FanDuel, I think, has this accurate. I mean, the Bruins are a slight favorite because they have home ice and they have that history. But they lost in the first round last year. They have some demons they have to overcome as well. They and do. the Leafs yep. got through the first round. And what happens in the regular season doesn't – always factor into what's going to happen in the playoffs. We know that from the Battle of Ontario days where Ottawa would beat up on the Leafs during the regular season every single year, and you get to the playoffs and the the script would completely flip. But the goaltending right now would obviously side with the Bruins, clearly. I, I think their top six, McAvoy in particular, Lindholm in particular, would lean Bruins, but I, I think the Leafs can compete in that area. But I think between now and Saturday, what's going to become clear is best players got to be best players. But I think this is simply up the middle of the ice. Like we keep talking about the big dog and chasing his second heart and chasing 70 game, 70 goals. 
If he's up against Charlie Coyle and Pavel Zaka, he better absolutely torch them because I'm not convinced Willie can ride with Pasternak. I'm not convinced Marner can ride with One of them Marchand. has to. That's One the, of them that's has the, to. That's the, ma- that's the matchup. It's like if it's just going to be because Pasta's torched them every yep. game I've watched, the Leafs-Bruins, where it's like fly down the wing. There's been some suspect goaltending, but it's like – 88 for the Bruins has been dynamite, where mm-hmm. he's a difference maker. Right. And one of those guys has to look at it. And it is a team game. It's about five-on-five five play. But you look at certain individual matchups. If we're not talking about Marner or Nylander being better than, than Pasternak, or at least equaling them and then passing that off to Austin Matthews and Zaka or John Tavares and somebody else up the middle. But the one thing about the team play is the way Boston plays. It's like an individual uh, like a Sidney Crosby is so well prepared when he takes the ice, he's always giving him ch- himself a chance to succeed. That's the Bruins as a team, how they approach it, how they play, how they work, how they're physical. They might not win all the time. They got bounced in the first round, but for the most part, they're going to give themselves a chance to win. And the way they play defensively, if Toronto thinks, and they should know this with how many times they played them during the regular season and playoffs, if they don't come up with some kind of ground and pound game, because they pinch you off in the neutral zone. They don't give up odd man rushes. They're very responsible. They're conscious of what they're doing. And if, if Toronto can't create offense in some kind of cycle ground and pound game, they won't have success. Very simple. So if they don't know yeah. that going in, they should. I, I think they do. And, and, and really, you look at it, yes, they've got to worry about themselves. They've got to, obviously, you do your pre-scout. You know, the, the Bruins are going to try and get under your skin. They're going to be physical. They're, all of that type of stuff. But it is going to come down to, I think, your goaltending has to be good. And, you know, it's been wobbly recently. Mm-hmm. So that's a concern. Um, you know, defensive core, like, is Edmondson, like, Edmondson hasn't looked very good at all. Is he playing at all? Like, did he well, play? He last he's night. not he's, playing tonight. I knew he did play last tonight. night, but he didn't. But yeah, that, well, he he's banged, banged up? up. I mean, obviously, he, he, there's a reason he missed time. I, I think they've probably not forced him in, but wanted him to get in to get some right. action before the playoffs. And uh, I don't know if he's at 100%, which is concerning. I, I think what's interesting is it feels as if we're moving in a direction where TJ Brody won't be in the top six, right? Like that seems like that's what's happening here is TJ Brody is, is going to be on the outside looking in. Um, right. Obviously, we'll find out come game one. We'll see what happens with these other injuries. You know, Morgan Riley has struggled down the stretch, but he's a playoff performer. Like, Mo- Morgan Riley has proven he gets to the playoffs, he's re- he'll be ready. I have no concerns about him. I-, I believe he'll be fiery. I believe he'll be energetic. I think he'll be skating. He finds another gear or two in the playoffs, mm-hmm. and he deserves, I-, I believe, that level of respect that he'll he'll put it together. But, you know, how everything else comes together is, is, is going to be a question mark. We'll see. But the Bruins are, are limping in, too. Like the Bruins are, are not playing yeah. their best hockey right now, and they have they've got demons. Like we said, like that that cho- that was a choke job last year against Florida. They had Damn the greatest right it was. Reg- up regular one? season. Absolutely, after the greatest regular season in NHL history, they choked away a three game three yeah. games to one series lead. So they they have their own history in that area, and that building is a spooky one for Leaf fans. Let's call it what it is because yes. of the history. It is. It just it, it is, looks dude. There's no it other looks word dark. to describe it's a, it. <laughs> yeah, it's just not a, a, a not a comforting building. Um, so maybe it would be ideal, needless to say, to avoid a game seven there. But the previous three incarnations have gone that far. I would probably sign up for that because I think that's probably where it's going to go. Um, but the Leafs have to make sure that they get out of tonight healthy. Figure out goaltending. Figure out special teams. Is McMahon playing? Domi will return. I think Domi's going back on that top line with Matthews and Bertuzzi. You shift everything else around. And listen, this is going to be a massive moment for the whole organization because, you know, Tavares got a year left after this. Marner's got a year left after this. The coaching cycle in this league is rapid. It happens all the time. You're back up against a team that's got you before. It's a fork in the road. You know, it's it's a fork in the road, and and this is what they they wanted, right? Like last year, obviously the Dubas turnover was significant. That was a massive storyline. He moved on. Tree Living comes in. They feel different today than any Dubas teams, but from the top, Shanahan down, the mantra has been: bring it back, run it back, punch your ticket, and hope you go on a run one year. Well, they punched the ticket, 
regardless of who they're playing, if it was Boston, Florida, Tampa, it doesn't matter. They've accomplished that. Step one was get to the playoffs, and that's where they're at. Now you got your ticket. You, you got to make it work, right? Yeah. And now you, it's everyone time. says about the Boston Bruins, oh, it's the Bruins again, the big bad Bruins. It could be the Rangers. They're damn good. Carolina's damn good. It's not like there would have been some kind of layup for there these isn't fans. One. Where, if there is, there isn't a layout. There's if you could no get to Washington, guys. maybe that might be a matchup where you're like, this wouldn't be. This might be a little bit different than one of those top teams. But for the Leaf fans that are like, oh, why do we get Florida or Boston? There's, there's nothing. There's no such thing as a layup, and a gift is around. So you got to do it anyway. And the next one's going to be harder. So just get it over with. You got to do it. Yeah. And I said last night to Duffy about five times. It doesn't matter Florida or Boston. It's about them. Can they flip the switch here? You talked about Boston struggling. Maybe that's one of the biggest key to the series, Hayes. Which team can flip the switch from what they've done the last five days and say, okay, it's go time? And if you were a betting man right now with the past history of the Bruins and what I talked about with their whole approach, you'd have to lean on the Bruins. Can the Leafs do it? Of course. But they just need their guys to step up and get it done come playoff time. That's right. Because it seems like... We talked to CJ last year before the playoffs, and he goes, guys, this is going to be the last shot for these guys that go into the playoffs, and it wasn't. I would definitely think this would be the last shot for this type of approach with all the same guys because to go on any further with it if it doesn't succeed would would literally be crazy. Yeah, I, I mean, you – We'll we'll pick at a carcass if there is one. Put it that way. If not, like you can say what if, coulda, all of that. The coach, everybody, in you know, a wholesale change, you know, buyouts, guys moving around. Who knows? But you know, you've got an opportunity here. There is no layup. I watch. I, I I was lucky here in the last two weeks to finish off my games to see a lot of top tier teams throughout the league. You know, I got to see Colorado live. I got to see Dallas live. I got to see Edmonton. Uh, you know, I've watched Toronto live, you know, several times. Um, Tampa last week, Florida last week, New York Rangers on Monday, last night, Boston. There's no easy out. Washington on Sunday, last Sunday. I think Washington, New York Rangers would be the, the most predictable, predictable one right mm-hmm. now, if I had to call it. Yeah. And that might not even predictable. Who knows? You know, Charlie Lindgren all of a sudden might be a, uh, you know, a, a Jim Carrey out of nowhere because he stood on his head. Like there, this is why, why you play the game, but that's the only one that I could say New York Rangers, Washington, that's tilted heavily for the Rangers based on how well the Rangers played and Washington gets in last night. That's you know, what you get for the President's Trophy. You get that one yep. series where it's like, this should be kind of a, there's never a gimme, but this should be take care of business, and there's your little gift for the President's yeah, Trophy. it should be. And I would say Carolina and the Islanders are just below it. That doesn't mean the Islanders can't win, but Carolina, in my opinion, is substantially better. But, Agreed. It, you know, it's if you're talking Florida-Tampa, Toronto-Boston, Winnipeg-Colorado, Edmonton, Vegas, like those are crazy <laughs> series. Like those are really. Is really... that confirmed? It's Edmonton, Vegas. No, it's first. not Vegas. No, Vegas and LA. We don't know who's going to play Edmonton. If Vegas wins again tomorrow night against Anaheim, it's Edmonton, Vegas. Oh um, my God. So it's in Vegas's hands. Interestingly enough, who do you want to play? <laughs> Why was Torts getting destroyed for pulling the goalie? I thought they had he's to. He's trying pull to win in goalie. regulation. That's not his. Fault. I know, but you know, people were trying. like, "What the hell, Torts?" Is was it because of the gift to the Washington? I don't know. It mm-hmm. was like I thought the understanding was they had to win in regulation. So if it was tied, they were pulling their goalie, and they did. They did. And he just got roasted well, on Twitter. The, the, and I couldn't, fi- I couldn't uh, do the math and figure yeah, out why. I'll tell you what it is. So what? Detroit pushed it to overtime, which meant Philly was already out. Their oh. season was done. So again, though, I'm with you. What John yeah, Tortorella is not he, there he, to prop up. No, the Pittsburgh Penguins or the yeah. Detroit Red Wings, and you can't have an right. iPad watching other games while your team's playing. He was under the yeah. understanding if his team was tied, he's got to pull the goalie, and that's what he did. That's why I couldn't understand yeah. why he was getting heat. Well, I wow. mean, <laughs> because it didn't work for them, and Washington got gift wrapped, basically a free goal and then a playoff spot. But that's right. not his job to worry about what Washington. Like, yes, they were out. They were no technically kidding. out by like two minutes. They had been eliminated by that point. But I'm sure he went in. Like you said, everyone knew it. They had to win in reg. And he's like, I'm going to tell my team this is what we're doing. We're not going to deviate and quit because of right. you know what happened in Detroit and Montreal. 
Uh, and he's got no reason to do anything for Pittsburgh or Detroit. What does he care about those two teams or those no two No kidding. Markets? It's like people well, were trying yeah. to question him like he was some kind of dummy. And he was like, what do you want me to do? I had to pull the goalie. Yeah. I have, yeah, it, listen, it, I've been tough but, on Tortorella. I have no issue with that last night. Yeah. None. And and you know what? He also, like there are Pittsburgh fans saying, he, you know, he did that on purpose to screw Pittsburgh. I'm like, he didn't do it. <laughs> like this is this is how every fan base is reacting that, you know, Detroit's mad at him. Pittsburgh's mad at him. He's just trying to make it into the playoffs and regulation. And you're right, Brian. He doesn't owe anybody else an excuse. You know what those other teams should have done? One more game exactly. when it mattered. Exactly. Yeah. Detroit so I was going to say, a right before we break here, like to to like you could see Dylan Larkin again, like to get to the end of the line and just lose like that, man, that's crushing. When you're trying to break through and get to the playoffs, like Sid was cooking, he probably thought some miracle way he was going to get the pens in, and for it just to collapse on you in a day, it's tough. It's tough, man. It, well, that's two years in a row. Pitts just missed in on the yeah. last week, and if you're if you're dubious and you're hoping for high end talent and picks, it stings even more because you're going to get like the thirteenth pick instead of trades at the deadline and folding and maybe getting the eighth pick or the ninth pick. And yeah, yeah Detroit hasn't been in the playoffs in a long time. They had it. They were in the playoff spot all year. They had it, and they yeah. they let it get away from them. Um, all right, Andrew Raycroft coming up. Alumni in Toronto, alumni in Boston, right? He's an alumnus of both. We'll get his take on how the Bruins were playing coming into the playoffs, what we can expect out of the Leafs-Bruins come Saturday night. It sounds as if it's going to be game one Saturday night in Boston. So we'll start looking ahead to that. Obviously, we have Leafs-Tampa tonight. We'll tee that up as well. It sounds like Matthews is going to play. Kucherov's going to play. You notice no one in Tampa is saying, sit Kucherov for the Panthers. They're saying, play him, right? Why not? Try to get 100 assists tonight. And he's one off that mark. So we'll start looking ahead to that as well. Role play level of concern in an hour. Oh. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on TSN 4. Overdrive continues. Brought to you by FanDuel. Bringing you everything from the opening line to the final score. Leafs Tampa tonight. Game 82. Both teams know where they're going. The Leafs are off to Boston. Tampa. They fly down to Florida or bust that? Probably fly. a flight. Fly. Got to be a flight. Three or four hour drive. Okay. Yeah. You know, so it's, yeah. It's, God it's forbid you made those fellows ride on a bus. For three <laughs> I hours know. How season. could you? How dare you suggest you'd bus down there? My apologies. But uh, yeah, the Leafs are. Uh, I think they they were planning on staying in Florida and playing Florida, but uh, that didn't happen. And not only because they lost to the Panthers last night, but because Boston lost back to back games against Washington and Ottawa last night. So now we have Leafs Bruins. Again, the last time they played in the playoffs was in 19. We know how that played out. 18, we know how that played out. 2013, we know how that played out. Let's head down to Boston now and catch up with a guy that covers the Bruins but has an alumni jacket for both teams. Your former teammate, oh, here's Andrew Raycroft. How you doing, Andrew? I'm great, thanks. Jeffy, I would love to see you get on a bus for four hours and go get ready for a hockey game. I would love to sit next to you on that bus. For four hours and listen to it. No, buddy. Those days are over, Razor. I'm nice and patient now, and nothing phases me, bud. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. He's a motivational speaker, and he made that announcement yesterday on our show. That yeah. I'm, Did he get any niblets last night? Anyone reaching out? Oh. Dude, you know what? I'm glad you asked, Brian, because I had some corporations reach out, and we're okay. partnering with some speaking, speaking engagements in the new year. Okay. All right. I love it. Maybe up in, like, Sudbury, a little four our bus ride up there. No, it's from big Tony time. Robbins. It's no. big time. <laughs> Razor, I was like, I was a moose, like a big time moose. I was three bills plus, and I'm, I'm, I'm back in action. I'm in, I'm a, almost at playing weight, and things are changing. I'm going to do some motivational speaking, buddy. I'm proud of you. I, I did hear. I got a couple whispers that there's a life coach involved, etc. So uh, again, proud of you. Yes. Yeah. yeah he's Thanks. got. He's got the life coach. We love it. The muse. And your muse is a big Leaf fan, and I'm sure he's feeling good about Leafs Bruins on Saturday. And and we've been preparing for Leafs Panthers up here. What about you guys down in Boston? Like, were you just assuming it was Tampa? And how do you feel about the idea that now it's going to be Toronto starting on Saturday night? Well, I certainly um, assumed that there would be a way that that the two points would slide, Um, especially Bruins beat Florida last week, I think it was. So it's like, oh, okay, you know, they should settle into the division. Uh, I, I 
personally think this is, uh, to start the week, advantage Toronto. I think Toronto feels better about getting the Bruins, and I think on the Bruins' side, I think Toronto's a bit of a tougher matchup than Tampa. I know that's not necessarily how people are viewing it here or uh, maybe in Toronto for that sake, but but I just look at the five-on-five goal differential, and it's just so lopsided. Um, both the Bruins and the Leafs are in the top 10, and then Tampa's down at 25 or 26. So, you know, I look at that, I, I think, um, again, the Leafs missing out on Florida. Florida's just annoying, right, guys? Like, mm-hmm. they're just, well, you can beat, everyone can beat them, but they're just annoying to do so. So I think just having to, being able to miss that in the first round should feel good for the Leafs. And, and for the Bruins, I think, um, they have past history and this season history in, in their hands. So both teams will feel decent about the matchup, I think, today. Razor, does there need, we, we talked about which team, because Toronto's not exactly dialed in right now, and the Bruins just basically didn't have two performances that were anything to write home about. As far as the Bruins case, like, did, is there any switch flipping that needs to go on, or they they just done this enough, they know what to do come playoff time, and they'll be dialed in? No, <sighs> The the reason I say no is because these two games that they just played Monday and Tuesday were against the norm. Uh, prior to that, um, maybe three weeks ago, Jim Montgomery gave it to the guys pretty good, and over those next two and a half weeks, they played Carolina, they played Florida, they played Tampa, and they won five of six and, and played really well, not giving up goals, not giving up opportunities, uh, dialed it in. And, and that basically was sustained all the way through Saturday night against Pittsburgh, and then these two games, the wheels fell off. So I, I don't think, like, if they had a won the division and they lost those two games, I still would have been saying it, it's not a big deal um, because they have played good hockey here over the last three weeks. Now, the power play hasn't been good. Like, there's little pieces of their game. It's certain, far from perfect that you need to be starting game one, but... Um, I think these two games were more against the norm than, than the norm over the last month. With Andrew Raycroft, the, I think it's similar sentiments up here. The Leafs have lost three in a row now for the first time since mid-January, but from mid-January up until mid-week last week, they had racked up more points than any team in the league. So they had been playing well and moving in a pretty good direction. I think both teams are just focused on the playoffs at this point. Um, you know, the Leafs have their own playoff history, obviously, in their own history against the Bruins. But in terms of the Bruins, and I know I just talked about flipping the switch, but last year, like from afar, you look at what they did during the regular season, then up 3-1 against the Panthers. And I know Bob goes in, stands on his head, clutch goals for the Panthers, Panthers move on. But the Bruins were a massive favorite. They're up 3-1 in the series. To me, that's a choke job. Is, is there concerns about that with the Bruins, like that they have to overcome any of their own playoff demons? Well, I think I, I think it's kind of hanging around. If 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 they don't lose last year in the first round and they lose in the second round, I think there's less pressure on this, and, and there would be a little bit more confidence. I think the core is changed. I think more of the question is is the fact that Bergeron and Krejci aren't here mm-hmm. for the first time in the playoffs in in 20 years. Like you know, I was there for Bergeron's first game. That's that's how long ago it was that he hasn't been with the Bruins and in the mix for playoffs. So I, I don't think there's as much hanging over last season because of the changeover. I think it's more the questions of does this team, does this Bruins team have it like they did in 18 and 19 to go into Toronto and win game six to bring it home and beat the Leafs in game seven. I hope. Like those are kind of the questions I think that are, are with this group now because of the no Burge run and the no Krejci. Rays are watching the Leafs and Bruins over the last several years, just either being a fan of hockey and now being a broadcaster. Like you've seen the playoff losses for the Leafs. If going into this series, what would you pick out one element of the series where you would say from the Toronto perspective, if they don't fix that or address this one particular thing to even start, they have no chance. Penalty kill, right? I mean, if, if they don't, if, and the Bruins power play hasn't been good for a while, but if they don't kill penalties, I feel like that in 18 and 19, when, when I was paying attention, I didn't really pay attention in 13, but 18 and 19, it felt like every big opportunity the Bruins power play scored. And 
Um, we know how many more penalties are called in the playoffs. It's still not the same as the regular season, but you're going to get three, four a game, and it just feels like whether it's the goaltending in Toronto or the penalty kill, they have to find a way to, to stop that momentum, especially on the road in Boston. Razor, speaking of goaltending, so obviously there's some question marks here in Toronto. I think Samsonov is going to get the run. What is the thought process in Boston? Is it just run with Swayman? Or, you know, last year it was all marked for, what, the first six and then Swayman in game seven. Do you think Monty goes both goaltenders or he just runs with one? Well, Noodle, I think we're going to get, but it's fascinating because it seemed as though, you know, with these previous, round setups, you're going to have the Leafs questioning goalies every night and Bobrovsky every night, and then Vasilevsky and who's going to play in the Bruins. Now, this series, every single day, all four goalies are going to be asked, both coaches are going to be asked who's playing the next game. Win or lose, it's going to go back and forth, and uh, it looks and seems like, up at least up until yesterday, that Allmark had the inside track. He's been fantastic since the deadline. blayman has been a little more up and down. Now, Wayman played great against the Toronto Maple Leafs in two back-to-back games in March. So I'm not sure. No one practiced. No one talked today. But but Monty essentially said Allmark was going game one without saying it um, this past week. I don't know if that's changed now that it's Toronto and it's matchup based. Um, there's been talk of rotation. I don't see how you go through a straight oh, rotation stupid, in the playoffs. Man. It's re- yeah. It's it's it just doesn't work. I think. Most people, you know, most guys that have been in the room recognize that. So it's not going to be a straight rotation. But I think I think we're going to see all four goaltenders, guys. It's it's going to which is going to add to the chaos of this series. With uh, Andrew Raycroft down in Boston, Nesson studio analyst, former Leaf, former Bruin, uh, Leafs Bruins. We believe game one Saturday night. So I'll ask you, you know, from a Leaf perspective, what what you think the Leafs have got to clean up in order to to win this series. Let's flip it to the Bruins. Like, what would be scaring the Bruins the most about either their own play or about what the Leafs could bring in terms of their attack? Well, I think it's the Leafs' depth up front. And, I mean, I, from what I've been seeing, it, it seems as though it's, it, they've spread the big boys out a little mm-hmm. bit. And, and if they do that, who's playing against Tavares? or the Marner or Matthew. Like, how are they going to deploy their forwards group, the Boston Bruins, against the depth of Toronto? And will they be able to either keep them off the board enough as a forward group or score enough to win this series? So, so for me, that, that's what I'm looking at. Can the, can the Leafs take advantage of what seems like a little bit more depth up front, and how do the Bruins stop that? Razor, before we get you out of here, we had Hal Gill on a couple of weeks ago. And <laughs> oh, <laughs> Skillsy, God. can you describe, we talked to Skillsy about his bag chucking ability. Can you describe to the listeners and viewers how much that guy enjoyed making his luggage touch the far end of the room and not even go in it so he could have a cold one? <laughs> Did he like doing that or no? Oh my god! Like more than more than any more than a dog loves a ball. Like it's literally, the only reason why he played in the NHL was to get on the road, to get on that bus off of an airplane, and see how fast he could be back down at the lobby waiting for whoever was going to go have beers with him. Uh, and and I guess what's so important, right? Or what's so uh, what was so impressive, right, Jeffy? Was his consistency. Like, yes. there wasn't one road trip, one city there, he didn't miss. Like, he did not no. miss running up to his room, throwing his bag, and having six beers before dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say he stayed true to himself, Razor. <laughs> <laughs> he certainly just stayed true to himself. You knew what you were going to get every single day. That's yeah. amazing. Uh, we appreciate you, you setting the scene here for us. We're looking forward to uh, Lease Bruins. I'm sure we'll catch up during the series and uh, – Enjoy it. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, it'll be a blast, guys, for sure. We'll talk over the next couple of weeks. You got it. There's Andrew Raycroft. And Hal Gill played 1,100 games. Yeah. Let's say 550 on the road. That's <laughs> 550 bag chucks, if not more, yeah. plus preseason playoffs. Wow. And if he had a cold, 
it's just a massive glass of scotch because PJ Axelson, remember, told him that you got to have scotch. Yeah. He right. probably purposely went out and ran naked in the streets in the snow <laughs> just to get the sniffles. <laughs> yeah, he was seeking He would out shovel the his driveway with no gear on to walk inside with the sniffles. Right. Yeah. Have a scotch. Scotch. <laughs> yeah. And he'd kill those sniffles immediately. Right? Yeah, he said it worked like he <laughs> That's the one thing to talk yourself into believing it works. So it's like got to do that every time. Yeah. It's psychology, right? A lot of that is just mental buildup. Like I'm not sick anymore. It's like a, it's like a Shaolin monk type. But you thing. know those dudes. Like I saw this dude on March break with my kids in the hotel. The six foot four lanky traveling salesman. That guy can delete beers like no one else on earth. And yes. Hal Gill was like six six. There were it, like. Six pints was an appy. Like it's it was it, it's crazy a, yeah. how tall guys, dude. Uh, tall guys can delete pints yeah. for fun and yeah. and not even be phased. That's Andre the Giant. I mean, obviously, was the number one contender when it came yeah. to that. Like he would He'd have a hundred beers after a match. Yeah, yeah. There was a Jake the Snake's told. I told you guys. I heard a story that Jake the Snake <laughs> was driving him like forty five minutes, forty five <laughs> minutes from like the ring to the hotel and he said grab me two cases of beers and he said all 48 were gone by the time they pulled in <laughs> this guy had 48 beers in like maybe well, it was an hour and a half maybe joe from yeah. the bridge after the break see if you can find rick flair's routine when he was traveling the booze that he consumed mm. when he was going from match to match right like it's 10 crazy. martinis in the airport six beers on the bus 18 like it was every Caesar. day, too. Ric Flair oh, said yeah. every day for like 17 years or something. But I don't think Ric Flair, like he would have been tall, but I don't think he was like crazy tall. No. Right. He just had a hankering for it. Yeah. <laughs> You're right, though, man. You get a guy at 6'5 or something, he will just destroy a beer. Two two drinks, two sips. Yeah, two gone. sips. Good night. Can I have yeah. another one, please? See you and later. They, just, they, can, they can hammer beers all day and all night. <laughs> yes. uh, all right, Darren Dreger coming up. Role play level of concern still to come. Some massive news out of the NBA. Josh Lewenberg will join us on Masai speaking, but Jonte Porter ban for life from the NBA. Wow. We'll get into that and the details, wow. and one detail in particular that really points to how ugly it was for the Raptors this year. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app. All right, Darren Dreger in about uh, 15 minutes on Washington getting in, the teams that missed out, what we still have to deal with in the West in terms of jockeying for position, maybe the playoff schedule. And, uh, again, we're teeing up Leafs lightning tonight, and we'll get into what Messiah had to say earlier today, the Jonte Porter news. LeBron is into the next round, but they're playing Denver. Steph Curry and the boys, see you later. They got pumped last yeah. night by my Sacramento Kings. Always believed in Mike Brown and the Kings. I love seeing that. <laughs> what, happens with, that. what happens with G-State, man? They're in trouble. I mean, you see Clay last night. He was was he old for ten? Like he was he was getting goofed on. That's that's how quickly it it turns. Clay Thompson, Splash Brothers, Hall of Famer, one of the great players of all time, winner, champion, everything, every possible adjective you can use. The guys had a really tough year, really tough year. He's realizing it's over for the most part, and he was jacking up brick after brick last night, and he became. The guy that was getting goofed on. Did you? Like, does that shock you? That like I know he's had serious injuries. I believe he's had calf or Achilles or yeah. It's yeah, been big it time on. injuries. But did you think it would amount to him not being able to shoot the ball and be what he is now? I never thought that. Shooting, you think he would be able to keep in line, right? Because yes. he's truly one of the the great shooters of all time. He's just right. he's not a young man. Like he's he went 0 for 10 from the field, 0 for 6 from 3 last night. And you know, it it comes at you quick. He's 34. The NBA it's tough to play in your late 30s. Yeah. That's why LeBron And he is- was saying earlier in the season he had a presser regarding his upcoming contract and he's like I deserve the bank from what I've done in my career and now it's like not getting you're it not, there. You're not getting it bank. You're not getting bank. No, he's not getting it there and the questions are already coming up like is Steph going to want to stick around cuz like, that's right. what you get with the playing, right? It was a bad game. Golden State looked bad. You got one one game out of stuff. Great. No one's going to remember that. You no. missed the playoffs. See you later. You're out. Um, you want to hear this Ric Flair yes. audio quick? <laughs> Ric Flair in his heyday back in the day. Let's, let's see what his routine was. 
So how much do you drink a day? I said, I'll drink at least uh, 10 beers and probably five mixed drinks. He said, well, how many days a week do that? I said, every day. He said, well, how do you, what do you mean every day? I said, I said, I work every day. I drink the beer in the car, I get to the hotel and I drink vodka. He came out of a chair like that. You drink every day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, and you've been doing that for how long? I said, uh, well, let me see, it's 1989, I started in 72. Uh, you do the math, almost 20 years. He said, that's not possible. You do the math. <laughs> boy said, oh, yeah, it is. <laughs> like, how is that even possible, man? Like, that's the guy that got up in the, in the morning and hit the gym for three hours, though. Yeah. That's something I'm yeah. not. I can't do that. If I have no, one drink, I the get night it. Before. But it's it's a, it's like a guy that rips two packs of heaters a day. It's like, how do you even find time to do that? Like, yeah. how do you find time to hammer that many beers every day? Like, there's no time in the day. It's a great question. Even better follow up yeah. would have been explain how you did anything else. But uh, I guess he, Function. I guess he did, man. I guess he did. All right, Drake's coming up, and role play level of concern. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 in on TSN four.